His name is Guy Siraki, and he's on the line with us here this morning. He is running for governor of Pennsylvania, and we're so happy to be able to speak with him today. As uh, we're a year out from this election, but it's time to start thinking about it. A successor to Tom Wolf as governor of Pennsylvania. Our conversation is brought to you by Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. Uh, he's that guy. He's Guy Siraki going and joining us this morning. Good morning. Good morning, Todd. Thanks for having me. I'm glad you're with us here today. Now, Chester County is a bit of a distance away from Pennsylvania, and, and as, as or from from Pennsylvania, boy, that's for you. <laughs> That's Freudian uh, from Western PA, and as I'm sure you're hearing, and you're you're in the neighborhood here today, um, Western Pennsylvania sometimes feels like it's a whole different state than Eastern Pennsylvania. You're from Chester County, so uh, there are some doors to knock down here, aren't there? Yeah, it's a good point. I appreciate the opportunity to talk about it. I mean, first is my bit of my personal story, and then the second is some realities. And, and from a personal standpoint, like like many folks in Pennsylvania. Uh, you know, my family and, and my wife's family are from all over Pennsylvania. So most of my wife's family is from western Pennsylvania, from Allegheny, Westmoreland, say it. Um, our daughter went to Pitt, uh, and I've been working with, you know, one of my first positions in government was working for Senator John Hines, who was native to Pittsburgh. So now that I've done my gratuitous sucking up to western Pennsylvania, let, <laughs> let me uh, explain really the serious part, though, and that is, the reality is of the challenges we've all faced for the last two years have been felt in city and suburbs and rural Pennsylvania, West and East. We've all had to live under Tom Wolf's silly rules about where we could shop, whether we could go to church. So the reality is, uh, I, you know, as I say to folks all over Pennsylvania, uh, no one, no one in any part of the state got any special courtesy or any special privileges. We, uh, those of us on the outside looking in, we're all on the outside looking in no matter where you lived. Um, the governor uh, currently is certainly um, in, in the crosshairs, uh, if you will, the figurative crosshairs, as people have uh, looked at the way that the state has been governed since uh, since the pandemic started. But um, his governing style really hasn't changed uh, since he got into office. He's He's been sort of like this the whole time, has he not? Yeah, I think it's one of the biggest disappointments is that he has been uh, he's been detached, out of touch. Um, a lot of other governors are far more engaged. We see them in our communities. We see them everything from little league games to touring our businesses, meeting with whether you're you know a farmer or a factory worker. He's been very detached, and I think the detached part really hurt us the last two years because. So many of the things he said, we all knew, just didn't make any sense. We knew they weren't practical. We knew they were harmful. And I think it's that sort of this arrogance of ruling, you know, ruling by uh, dictate, ruling by mandate, uh, stems from that sort of arrogance of being detached. Look, not only have there been problems the last two years uh, because of bad decision-making, but there's been a heck of a lot of good stories. And this governor's not only issued dictates that have harmed us, He's really not been out there as a cheerleader or a champion. There are hundreds of great stories of community groups that rallied around, of causes to save local restaurants, of, of factories that retool to make products to keep us all safe. And the governor should be recognizing those people. There are schools that expanded their capacity to take in other students. There's so many good stories in the midst of all the misery we had. And the governor has neither, neither been sensitive to the harm we faced nor lifted up or thanked those people who were the everyday heroes. Here in Indiana County, the big issue, uh, and it's the issue we have with the governor, is the regional greenhouse gas initiative, the the Reggie regulations that he is attempting to force upon the state of Pennsylvania. Uh, they will take effect uh, in in the early winter uh, or or toward the spring of next year, unless they are stopped somehow. Um, and and the governor has been uh, completely unresponsive. Uh, he's not sent a single representative here to Indiana County to speak to the people whose jobs would be lost. And here in Indiana County, it would really be devastating. What is your position on on those sorts of things? The Reggie regulations, number one, but the idea of uh, executive actions uh, having such a long term effect on the the counties uh, in Pennsylvania that would be affected by them. Yeah, it's an important point, and it affects not only Indiana County and those folks that are directly involved in energy. It affects every Pennsylvanian. So the first thing is I will continue to support uh, business groups, labor groups, 
and, and elected officials in trying to stop and slow down, if we can't stop, slow down these regulations. If, it, if in fact, the governor is able to prevail, uh, Guy Shiraki as governor will, will end that uh, Pennsylvania's participation uh, as soon as I take office. Look, the problem is that, again, it's this rule by di- dictate. I mean, none of us thought we lived in a dictatorship. None of us thought we lived in a kingdom. We thought there was citizen give and take. We thought there was give and take with elected officials. And, you know, again, uh, the same governor who told us we couldn't go to church, the same governor that told us to go buy your refrigerator at Home Depot but not at your neighborhood appliance store, is the same governor that thinks with a, with a stroke of a pen he's going to suddenly clear in the air. And we know that Reggie's neither going to clean our air nor uh, put people to work. In fact, it's going to do the opposite. It's going to do nothing to help the quality of air, and it's going to put thousands of people out of work. So one of the things we need to do is make sure it doesn't happen. If it doesn't happen, I'll repeal it. But more importantly, Pennsylvania should be the leading nation in, in natural gas and energy. We should be gunning for Texas, not doing everything we could to slow it down. And the reality is if we do it right, we can lower the cost of manufacturing, actually entice businesses to come here, put thousands of men and women to work, and we can become a destination state. We can stop losing out on comp- uh, competition to states in the South or other places. So it has been not only, uh, not only has the governor slowed things down, it's been a missed opportunity to grow the economy in other ways, as we're seeing, seeing with uh, you know the cracker plant out in Beaver County, a roaring vibrant energy sector is great for our economy, great for our air, but it's also great in creating other jobs. Wes, it's going to be a year from now uh, that the election actually takes place, and the Reggie question will certainly be one that is, um, well, it, it's it, we're still going to be up in the air with this thing. Uh, if it does go through, then we're going to have to be dealing with the effects of it. Uh, and if somehow it's able to be forestalled, then you're going to be battling a battle against a, a Democratic opponent, Josh Shapiro, who I believe has said that he supports it. I should not actually say uh, that he does uh, because I'm not certain of that. But uh, Josh Shapiro is um, right now the clear front runner for the Democratic side. So what is the campaign strategy for you as you move into the spring primary season and then from your standpoint to hopefully make it into the general election uh josh shapiro has been the most political attorney general in pennsylvania's history been but the most partisan attorney general in the history of pennsylvania and that that's not political rhetoric i mean that's a reality first of all when it comes to reggie The attorney general has a role when the governor issues a regulation or a a dictate like this. The attorney general has the ability to stop it. So every one of your listeners, everyone in Pennsylvania should realize that if if Governor Wolf is able to prevail and, and, and attempt to force us into Reggie, it will be because the attorney general didn't stop him. That's first and foremost. And if Josh Shapiro doesn't stop Tom Wolf, every voter in Pennsylvania will know that. Secondly, I talk about it. Look, anybody that follows him on Facebook and Twitter, he tweets more than Donald Trump, which I didn't think was possible. And he tweets in a way where on any given day he tells half of us or more in Pennsylvania that our ideas are wrong and he's going to do everything in his power to stop them. He's the chief law enforcement officer in the state. And whether the issue is abortion or guns or energy, he tells most Pennsylvanians that we're wrong and he's gunning for us. So we'll remind voters of that. We'll remind him that he stood by and watched our great cities burn to the ground last summer and was not present there to stop the violence or to bring those to justice. We'll remind voters that he's done everything he can to slow and stop the energy industry. The reality is he comes from that wing of the Democratic Party that's arrogant and out of touch and has the audacity to sit there as a, as a lawyer looking down at people who work for a living and tell you that your jobs are dirty and we're going to have to stop them. You're going to find some. Where else to go? It harkens back to Hillary Clinton committing the, uh, the sin of telling the truth when she told folks who worked in, in, in steel and coal that you're going to have to find jobs elsewhere. He's from that wing of the party. So I've said to voters across the state, the day after the primary, when I'm successful as the Republican nominee, I'm going to go pick up Josh Shapiro in my minivan and drive him, get him out of that mega bus he's driving around like a rock star. We're going to drive around together because I will take him street corner to street corner, courthouse to cou- courthouse because our ideas stand up against his. And and when the voters know the difference between the two of us, it won't even be a competitive race. He's so out of touch, 
he makes Tom Wolf look like a regular guy. You, of course, are going to have to beat uh, quite the field. It's it's expanding. It seems almost every day of Republican uh, nominee or, or candidates in in the primary. Uh, what to you makes you stand out? Uh, because in those in those rooms in Harrisburg, where people make decisions that impact our lives, my life experience has had me sit in every chair in that room. When we watch those meetings on TV, or you watch them on PCN, or you see them in your local community. I'm the one person that sat in every chair. What do I mean by that? I've been involved in community groups and advocated for for jobs or schools or things important to the communities I've lived in. I've sat in those rooms as an advocate for small businesses. I did all through this year trying to fight so that our local businesses can get open. I worked as chief of staff to Lieutenant Governor Jim Cawley, who led the Marcella Shale Commission to try and get energy off the ground. I've been an elected supervisor. So unlike a lot of people, I'm neither a career politician nor am I someone that doesn't know how government works and, frankly, understand where it's broken. So my life story is one of being everybody in that decision-making room, the private citizen, the decision-maker, and the person fighting for, for my members. And the second thing is this. I've been deeply moved by, deeply impacted by the last two years of the COVID. As you led with the show, I'm from Chester County. Uh, Chester County is, is in suburban Philadelphia, and at times we're the, we're the wealthiest county in the state, homes to companies like Vanguard, QVC, Hers Potato Chips. But I'm the first CEO of the chamber that's ever had members cry. My members cried because they were lost. They were out. They were felt helpless. Our economy was brought to its knees because people made decisions that told diners and gyms and barbershops they couldn't be open. And I will say to the voters of Pennsylvania, be you Democrat, Republican, or independent, join with me to take my experience, but join with me to make sure that what I saw firsthand happen to my businesses, to local businesses, and why I fought so hard to be part of the Vote Yes movement to change the Constitution. Let's bring that energy and passion to make sure that not only does that never happen again, but I know how we can grow this economy and make it better. So that's how I stand out. First-hand experience, but more importantly, the experience to actually get things done and to make sure that no one ever forgets that what happened to our local businesses and we never let it happen again. He's Guy Sirachi. He's on the line with us here this morning, running for governor in 2022. And we thank you for joining us today. All those gubernatorial candidates, you're the first, but uh, they'll all be on with us. And I appreciate your time today. I really appreciate the time. And I'll be back to Indiana County time and time again. And, uh, going out to visit some folks in the energy industry today and see some well pads and see how the men and women are trained to really bring back our economy. Folks can find me at guyforgov.com or on social media, guyforgov. Todd, I really appreciate it. Look forward to seeing you in person. It is my pleasure. It is the voice of Indiana County, WCCS 101.1 FM and AM 11 second, AM 11 second.